Hey, I've been tagged. I never get tagged. Yeah, I accept the challenge. Stick around, guys. Hey, hey, YouTube. Welcome back to Urban Outdoors. Hey, I'm Urban. But you knew that, didn't you? Hey, guys, I was just tagged yesterday by a wonderful young man from Finland. His channel is called Arctic Eliel. And if I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sorry. But this little guy is awesome. And he lives in Lapland, Finland. I found out about him through uh, Tim over at Kukuli Bushcraft. Young Eliel tagged me in one of his videos and I'm so honored that he did so. Uh, I just want to say Eliel, you do a great job with your videos. You are so blessed to live in such a wonderful place and to experience some of the beauty and wonderful things that you get to experience. And I believe what he's wanting us to do in this video is to share our knife collection. As soon as I watched his video, I went to his channel and I watched some of his other videos and I was just like, wow, I wish we would have had this stuff when I was his age. But he's documenting his life and it's great. And I hope that he'll continue it. I hope you guys will go give him some support so that his channel can grow, so that he'll be encouraged to continue documenting such wonderful things. And I want to support his channel, so I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can go check out Arctic LEL. Anyway, so he's wanting us to share with you our knife collection. So I guess we'll start with what's closest. I'm wearing a coat, so that means in a pocket I have a knife of some sort. And in this coat, I have this case, case pocket knife. Right over here on my little stand. And this knife is a neck knife, but it's missing the cord that goes through here. And I took this out of my uh, toolbox in my truck yesterday when I made my vehicle prepping video. Yeah, that's a, a knife that I have handy, so. And then for the next one, we're gonna look right down here. I always keep this boot knife here. Uh, this is a Smith & Wesson uh, HRT boot knife. But yeah, so right there within arm's reach, I've got three knives available. Um, let's move back here to the guest bedroom now. I have this knife here, which is a uh, just a Gerber pocket knife. Um, yeah, I can see there, it's just a, a Gerber. I've had this knife, I've had this knife forever and it has been a good workhorse of a knife this is a uh, USA Gerber you can see there USA I also have over here with my haven't even gotten my everyday carry stuff on yet it's so early this morning I've got this little tack force uh, got the uh, glass breaker there and the seatbelt cutter, serrated edge, and it's got the uh, assisted opening, so it just opens up really easy. Uh, over here, I have two other knives. This one is an Odom Custom Damascus knife. Just a beautiful little knife, leather sheath. And next to it, 
I have this knife that I got at Smoky Mountain Knife Works in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Another Damascus finish. And this is my right edge knife. Just a, I call it my dress knife. So I've got those knives there. Let's see, over here in this guest closet, I've got my battle belt hanging with my, you know, I've got my four AR mags, a couple of 9mm mags. But up here on my battle belt, I keep this Elk Ridge Bushcraft knife. There we go. Elk Ridge Bushcraft. The fox den is where I keep most of my knives, so here we are. Let me turn a light on. There we go. Hopefully the lighting will be better in here. Uh, over here on this table, I have my, uh, I did a video on this. A buddy of mine made this railroad spike knife for me. You can go check out that video if you want on my page. Evil Knievel stunt cycle. Uh, let's see. Over here, it's going to be a little bit dark, so I'll grab some of the knives that I have over here and bring them over to the table so we can talk about them. These are, this is a Kilimanjaro neck knife. And I like the knife, but I don't like this little thing right here that you have to push in to get the knife out. I don't really like that, but I do like the knife. I just wish it had a better sheath. And over here, I've got this knife. I did a video on this as well. This is a Walmart knockoff of a Mora. And it's basically just a bait knife. I uh, got a similar type of sheath and everything, but it was only two dollars and fifty cents at Walmart, so I had to had to go for it. This is another fishing knife, a bait knife that was given to me by my niece. It's kind of strange. It's got such a big, thick handle, but the blade of it is so tiny. It's very thin. I don't think it would be good for much other than fish. You know, you could use this for scaling. You could use this to cut line. And then, of course, you could use the, the blade to fillet a fish because it does have that flex. So I think that would be a, a bit more of a fillet knife. Oh, yeah, over here I've got a bucket. Let's see what we've got in this bucket. I'll just start pulling things out. Alright, so now we got a better camera angle there. I'll just grab knives and start pulling them out. Um, this one right here, I have a fixed blade. This is a, you can see it's got DB on there. This is my Daniel Boone Bowie knife. But yeah, this has got a nice old frontier looking sheath. It's my Daniel Boone knife. Then I've got here a, a Winchester Bowie knife. See, so you got Winchester there with a nylon sheath. It's got a plastic coating on the inside of the sheath, though. But yeah, that's that. That reminds me of Crocodile Dundee, where he says, "That's not a knife. That's a knife." So yeah, got that one. Now this knife here, this is a uh, this is an old knife that belonged to my father, and it is from Ontario Knife Company, which was a very popular knife a long time ago, and uh, it's got a very nice leather sheath to it. But yeah, this knife has been in my family for a long time, rather thin, but it's more of what I believe would be considered a kitchen knife. And I have this one here, which is a Blackie Collins knife. 
and uh, that's another one of those, that's a knife, but yeah, it's uh, a knife that belonged to my brother. Now here I have my uh, United States Navy Mark II. Um, this is a, a workhorse of a knife. This is probably what I would say is my most dependable knife. Um, if I had to have only one knife to carry, this is the knife that I would carry. Yeah, you can see this got the USN Mark II. Ah, uh, this knife, I don't even know where it came from. I've had it for since I was young. You can see it's used and abused. It's even worn down. Uh, it's got kind of a funky point there. It's almost like a Tonto uh, type of point to it. Don't know anything about it other than I've had it for, for almost as far back as I can remember. Over here I've got this is another Elk Ridge Bushcraft knife. It's a custom design, 440 stainless steel, and uh, you can see Elk Ridge Bushcraft. Nice little knife. Got a short blade, but it's good for doing whatever you want to have done. It's got a good size, comfortable wooden hand handle. Speaking of Elk Ridge, this is my first Elk Ridge knife that I ever purchased. And I, uh, man, I need to clean it up need to clean up all my knives. That might be what I do today. But yeah, you can see you got the Elk Ridge logo there. And this knife is, again, the fit and finish on these Elk Ridges, the handles are so comfortable. Alright, so that's it as far as these knives go. Alright, and now I'm going to bring out what is my, what I call my box of knives. And in it, you'll see a box of knives. I'll go through these real quickly. I've already done a video on these. I've got this cheap little bait knife. I have two of these. I keep them in my uh, tackle boxes. And again, it's just for cleaning fish, cutting bait. Another Gerber. I was on a Gerber kit for a while there. So I've got this Gerber with a skinning, skinning hook there. Uh, for a long time, I, a Gerber was my favorite knife. This knife was my brother's. I thought it was cool when I was a kid. He gave it to me when I was a teenager. Switchblade. Kind of old 50s, 50s style. And you know, back in the 50s, the guys that wore the leather jackets with the grease back hair and the cigarettes rolled up in their uh, t-shirt, they'd have the switchblade. This knife is a knife, another Gerber, uh, that was given to me as a service award for a uh, company that I worked for. You can see he's got Gerber on there. Came with this. It had a nice little plaque right here that had the company name with a tiny diamond in it. It was called Hillsburg Diamonds. This knife here is a pain to open, but once you get it open, it stays open. It's a Camelus. Adventurer Boy Scouts of America. I don't know if you can make that out. It says Adventurer BSA by Camelot. So this is a Boy Scout knife. Here I've got another little case. Uh, pocket knife. It's got uh, two blades. Fits in a pocket real easy. And then I've got this teeny, teeny, tiny, tiny case knife. I was on a case trip for a while. Look how slim that is. Uh, let's see, I've got here a little patch knife. Oh, I forgot to show you the patch knife that I had in the living room in my uh, shooting bag for my muzzle loader. I have a knife very similar to this. It's a little bit bigger. But this is what's called a patch knife. Another case. This was my brother's. Um, man, and it's so worn down. Look how worn down. The tip of the blade is here compared to where it used to be. And look how short the blade is now. This was his workhorse knife. 
And then I've got this knife here. This is more or less I keep just for memorabilia again and decoration. My son gave me this knife. It's got my name engraved on the back, which I'm not going to show you. Um, it's got three blades. I can get this one out. These knives need to be worked. But yeah, I thought I like kind of like that pearlized handle. But I keep it because my son gave it to me, and that means a lot. I don't know, I probably have some more hidden around here. Oh yeah, let me show you this one. This is my uh, my life jacket for when I go kayaking. And right on here, I keep my Gerber River Shorty. It's got the blunt tip. It's good. It's a good boating knife. Uh, got serrated edges for cutting rope, which is primarily what it's for. Got a nice grip handle there. And it fits right into my my PFD right there. Okay, over here in my fishing box um, that I take put in my kayak when I go fishing, I have this uh, custom-made David Manley fillet knife that I use as cutting board here to fillet my fish. And then I also have a mora here. This is a carbon mora. You can see how the carbon didn't stand up too well to my saltwater fishing trip. Moras, of course, as you know, are very dependable. Then, in my little mini tackle box, I should have a knife. Uh, yeah, it's also, uh, it's just a little razor blade type of knife. Got a little razor blade in there. But it's excellent for cutting fishing line with this right here. You don't even have to open the blade up. Because when you shut the blade, you can see the razor right there. So if you need to cut a fishing line, you can just not even have to open the blade. Just slice it like that. And that stays in my little portable fishing kit. Alright, and then in my other uh, main tackle box, I have another one of those Walmart Mora brands. And then... Uh, down in the bottom, I have one of the uh, I have one of the uh, Martini Finland knives. There you go, Eliel. I have a Finland knife, uh, but yeah, Martinis are you know those are good those are good knives. And then the last tackle box that I have is my um, saltwater surfing tackle box. It's got my uh, and the knife that I have in it is again, oops, is again another Mora. Uh, but this is a stainless steel, which I prefer the stainless steel Mora's over the carbon. And of course, I mean, you know, Mora's are just great knives. I almost forgot, over here in my rustic uh, bag, you can check out a video I've done on that as well if you scroll through my videos. I've got this old timer pocket knife pretty big pocket knife all right so that's it that i that i think pretty much does the majority of my knife collection but these are just knives that i've collected over the years all right eliel there you go man i think that's about it i'm sure i probably have some more knives hidden away in coat pockets and i don't want to leave out the knife that goes in my edc pouch that goes in my EDC bag, and that is my Victorinox Pioneer X Alox. And uh, you can see it's got my name engraved there. I'm not going to go over all the blades. There is a video that I did on that if you want to learn about it. But I would have felt wrong about leaving that out. Thanks for including me in this challenge. It was a lot of fun. Good luck with your channel. Keep making videos. I am supposed to nominate three people now. Okay, the three channels that I'm going to nominate to uh, this challenge. I'm going to nominate um, JB Outdoors and more. 
I'm going to nominate Harshman Hills, and I'm going to nominate Wolf's Head. So you three guys, first, go check out LEL at Arctic LEL. Then, I challenge you to do a video response in support of him by doing the same thing. I appreciate you guys coming along on Airbnb Outdoors today. Until next time, keep calm, carry on, and keep it outdoors.